That's actually, that's true. I did finish three and a half marathons. Um, you wouldn't know to look at me. I don't look like a runner. I look like uh, Anna Kendrick's wacky best friend in like a rom-com. Um, I have a finished three and a half marathons. Notice I said finish and not run. Uh, it's a distinct difference. What, what I do is not running. It's described as by, uh, by bystanders as like a slog or uh, escaping the scene of a crime narrowly. <laughs> And in fact, I tried to say that I finished one and a half marathons, uh, but apparently that's misleading. Uh, but the math checks out. Uh, but I do have a friend, and she's an actual runner, and she's not smug. Her name is Jody. Uh, she's much worse than smug. She's optimistic. <laughs> you can do it. You'll be fine. Um, which is true for her. She can do it, and she will be fine. <laughs> she's very athletic. Uh, she looks like a gazelle in a Disney movie was cursed by a witch and became a princess. Um, so she's beautiful and she's fast and I think birds land on her shoulder when she runs. And she tells me all the time, you can do it, I believe in you, despite a lot of evidence to the contrary. Uh, so after I'd run two half marathons, she called me to run the Cowtown in Fort Worth with her. And it's a big historic half marathon and I said, under no circumstances will I do that. That's an insane thing to do videos on the internet of people crapping their pants <laughs> don't need me helping them. Uh, but she said, you're amazing, you can do it, I believe in you. And I said, I don't know. And she said, you've done two other ones. And I thought, you know what? I have done two other ones. I can run a half marathon with no notice, no training, no water. I've done it twice before. <laughs> it's a little like your grandfather agreeing to get into a fight because he took out some Nazis in WW2. <laughs> there were some acts of valor way back when, but now it's mostly delusion. Uh, but I, uh, nevertheless, I agreed to do it. So uh, it came to race day, and I was standing in the corral. You know, they separate you by your mile time. And I was standing in the 13 minute milers. Because, like I said, I'm delusional. Uh, <laughs> Jody was way ahead with the seven or eight minute milers, rightfully so. So, of course, the gun goes off, the race starts, and you guys, I'm doing it. I was killing it. I was running a 13 minute mile for three quarters of a mile. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, this gave up. <laughs> Again, cheerful, nice people around you. That's what marathon pacers do. They're there to hold the flag and say, stick with go on without me. <laughs> and they did, and another pace group went past, and another, and another, until I was left at the very back with the walkers. Uh, if any of you have seen The Walking Dead, you know walkers, you got their arms outstretched, they're dying inside, they're groaning, and hungry, and confused. It's exactly the same as <laughs> Everyone at the back was just trying to finish. So there I was, but I didn't stop, right? I made it to mile three, seven, nine. But right at mile 11, the whisper inside that my body was doing of stop, stop and save yourself, <laughs> became a blood curdling scream of what are you doing to me? And finally, my brain said, you know what? I've had enough. We're going to do this. We're going to buckle down and we're going to finish. And my body said, no, we are not. And that's when my foot was broke. Just a little bit. Oh, it, wow. It's just a small bone, although with your foot there's a bunch of bones and you need all of them, it turns out. <laughs> uh, but at the time I thought, now nah, I'll be fine, and one step more and I was out. I sat down on a curb to take my shoe off and kind of survey the damage, and uh, I didn't really notice anything going on around me, and that's how I missed the 10 foot tall cowboy sheriff who was coming up toward me, and he said, Are you alright, little lady? You almost sat in a pile of horse shit. <laughs> It's four words, and of course I almost did. Uh, I wasn't able to respond. I was sort of focused on my foot, and that's when between the sheriff and I ran a very frail, very tiny old man, and he had a fanny pack and a tank top, and he had a cute little sweatband, and he was trucking. And you know, he was probably a power walker, and nothing was going to stop him. And I thought, that's so nice. And the sheriff said, you're not going to let that old geezer beat you, are you? <laughs> And my body said, yeah, because I'm going to die here. I'm going to throw myself in the Trinity River and just let it take me. <laughs> but my brain said, no, we are not. <laughs> so I shove my shoe back on, I get up, and I look at the back of this gray old head. You guys, maybe he's someone's grandfather. A lifelong husband in love with some woman's life. 
Maybe he's a war veteran or a titan business. I didn't care. I wanted him gone. <laughs> I put a target on the back of his head and I thought, if I could run faster than that little old man, I'll be fine. This was really just my jealousy and like pathetic, like kind of like pride speaking, my huge ego. Uh, but at the time, it seemed like the answer. So I ran as hard as I could right at that old man. And just as almost as I got there, my body said, no, no, we're not going to do this, even though my mind was saying, finish him. So the old man's long gone in the distance, and I'm left dragging my leg behind me, thinking finally this is it. I'm at mile 12 and a half, and just in case you guys didn't know, a half marathon is 13.1 miles. Uh, <laughs> so I still had like a mile and some change to go, and I thought, this is it. I'm going to call the wagon. They have this wagon. They pile up all the lifeless corpses, and they wheel you back. <laughs> the parking lot and uh, give you a banana. <laughs> and uh, I think finally I'm going to find a race official. The next one I see, and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm tapping out. And that's when I see a woman running toward me, salmon style, up the race course. <laughs> she's got a banana in one hand and a medal in the other hand, and she's yelling, you can do it! <laughs> it was Jody. <laughs> she had finished the race, got a banana, found out later had chocolate milk, and then turned around to make sure I finish. So she gets up next to me, and at every step of the way, my body says, this is it, you're crumbling, you're dying. And here I had a little bird on my shoulder saying, you can do it, we'll do it together, even though she had already done it much faster and more gracefully, I imagine. <laughs> the pictures confirmed it. But <laughs> we get up to the finish line, I cross the finish line alone, and I just, I start to cry. Because I was grateful. I was grateful to have a friend who finished a race and then willingly exercised more just for me. <laughs> and I was grateful that, you know, despite everything, I didn't give up. I cried with relief because I knew I was never going to run a race again. <laughs> and mostly I cried with joy because you guys, they did have to talk a look at that finish line. <laughs>